Okay, so we're trying to burn dinner again. Miranda wants Cajun, apparently. <laughs> hey, we can still go out to eat. Just saying. So this time I actually broke up the chicken a little bit inside uh -huh. to help make sure that it's cooking through and through. Now there's going to be water because of how much water we put in. Ooh, that's turning a little mushy, ma. All right, so maybe shouldn't have added the last water. Maybe a yeah. half a cup or something. Maybe. But it still looks like it's going to be pretty good. So let's grab one of the chunky pieces. Moment of truth, ma. Moment of truth. Did we get it done? All right. We got her done. Yay! All oh, right. Hi. <laughs> All right. We are back with Instapot. I think this is five or six. I don't know. I lost oh. track already. So anyway, we are going to let you see what it looks like now that it is done. And I hope you can see that. Boom. Excellent. All right. We're going to eat. Now, I need to add some more garlic because I like garlic really well. Yeah, Sorry not. about all that bounciness. You want more? That's good. I'm not a big eater, so I that's know. really good. All right. All right. So what you're going to do from here is you're going to do the keep warm setting. Okay. I don't want it to stay warm. I want it to cool off. Okay. So that I can portion it out. So what we're going to do then is we're going to close it to make sure that we don't have any uh, guests. <laughs> yeah, we, there are way too many guests in this house that are unwanted. They're little and they're black and they crawl around. Who hot? Uh, yeah. Do you want a spoon or a fork? A spoon. Um, I recommend adding hot sauce or soy sauce for those that prefer that. Yep, personally, I prefer garlic and a lot of it. Mm. Ooh, a little bit of hot sauce with some lime and some garlic. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oof. Oh, a little bit of salsa. Now you're killing my heartburn. I know, but I like salsa in meals like this. You should like show this. your face when you try it. Adding a little bit of salsa to this? Me showing my face? <laughs> talk with the camera going what are you talking about actually show my face mmm that's a pretty good rice even though it's a little mushy it'll be good for well considering that I'm toothless this is a perfect meal it's hot oh but it's so yummy see I like it I love it you ever going to go back to not using an Instant Pot? If it's going to be this way every time? It won't be. Okay. I, I'm going to talk to who taught me how to use an Instant Pot and ask them. Because okay. it might have just been needing 45 minutes instead. And halfway through just breaking it up. Okay. But I don't know, so I will ask them. Alrighty. I'm glad that this was a learning experience for both of us. Mm, that I, chicken is really moist. It is. Can you do me a favor? And I know I'm putting you on the spot, so if you don't have an answer, it's okay. But what has it been like your whole life with your mother stalking constantly? Insane. Well, I am crazy as a loon. Um, I mean, for me, it's always been normal to have excess of everything in the house. So I grew up with it being normalized. Um, recently, because of how the world is, it's been a little more out of proportion than it normally would be because you're trying to, you know, make sure that you're stocked if we ever end up with the second hit. And they're still talking about that earthquake hitting. So... Growing up, it was a little difficult being so different from other kids when they came over and they questioned it. And it was, oh, that's just how my mom is. And then, you know, that happened. Kids being kids, but at the end of the day, it was normalized. And for us, it was good because we always had food in the house. We always had a roof over our head and we always had extra toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> Which, as we know, 2020 was the year of losing toilet paper. 
I was literally mailing toilet paper to my friends in other states because mm -hmm. they could not get toilet paper. And I still have toilet paper from before the pandemic, mm -hmm. from my order in July before the pandemic. So July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, eight months before the run on toilet paper. Mm -hmm. And I still have toilet paper and I'm all stocked up again. <laughs> and I have more now than I did. Mm before this expired well that was Ben's so I would expect it to still be okay even if it still passed its due date because that stuff tends to still stay good oh no that is too spicy <laughs> mm -mm. there is some good salsa in there that's good salsa we don't do too much of I can handle hot sauce better than salsa. It's weird. So, what would the kids say? Because I know what the kids said to me. Um, they and just, what I said to them. But I'm curious what they said to you guys. They just thought it was weird. And they had a lot of parents influencing what they were thinking. So, obviously, oh, she's just a prepper. Oh, she's crazy. And there are people who thought that you were a hoarder instead of a prepper because that can be a very thin line mm -hmm. between hoarder and prepper yeah i'm leaning more towards hoarder right now mm -hmm. <laughs> and back then it was so much worse because we had all of our kids as things i mean you had four kids in one house it was insane but we had the apartment first um you were still good about making sure we were stocked up at the apartment but it wasn't until we got the new pantry set up that you really started stocking up. And then it's been the last three or four years where you found food for Patriots. Mm hmm That you really started more prepping rather than just food, like cans. Because you always we always had food in the house and we always had, you know, a small car kit. We always had the things to make sure that if we were needed to go, we could go. But I mean, kids just thought you were weird. Like, that's what all it was. <laughs> you know, when they would they would say something to me, they'd be like, wow, you have a lot of food. And I'd be like, yeah. My response to them was always, well, yeah, you came to visit and it wasn't expected. I always want to make sure I can feed everybody. Mm -hmm. And kids were randomly showing up at the door. And at the time, I didn't know that they were going hungry at home. Mm -hmm. They were just showing up at mealtime, and we had plenty to share with them, too. And that later, I learned, when they were a little bit more grown up, I learned that the reason that they were coming over was because they were hungry. And it made me just feel really sad that they couldn't tell me that, but very happy that they trusted us enough mm -hmm. to come and eat a meal with us. And... A lot of times they'd ask, hey, you know, can I take the leftovers home with me? Sure. You know, that, you know, go ahead. You know, the kids are not going to eat it. Go ahead. Take it home. And they did. And then fed their siblings, which I didn't know until later. I just figured they really liked it and wanted more. <laughs> Growing up, our friends always knew that we would have food in the house. So when they would come over... There would always be something, whether it was, you know, a can of fruit, or pancakes, French toast, chicken. There was a while where you struggled financially because all of us kids were going through so many things. Kids were in sports, instruments, um, and you weren't able to afford things for a little bit. And it really stressed you out because you're like, oh no, there's no food in the house. Where it would be a yeah, normal person would come in... Be like, oh, that's normal. <laughs> there was a normal amount of food mm -hmm. in the house, and I'm panicking because our shelves are empty. Right. Because mm -hmm. you guys turned into teenagers. The older two turned into teenagers and were eating us out of house and home. Groceries in this house with the four of you past, you know, 12 and up. Mm-hmm. 
the food bill was 900 to 1200 every month and that was when food was cheap yeah i mean we were going through eight gallons a month a week right it was because insane. the boys couldn't keep their friggin hands to themselves with the milk mm. this is so good okay well folks i want to say thank you very much for joining us i am going to apologize and say thank you to my daughter for her insight into her childhood and her mother prepping although at the time you know i didn't look at it as being a prepper i was just taking care of my family and i'm crazy because i grew up without food so my kids were not going to go without it just was not going to happen so thank you for joining us you're very welcome thank Happy you to be here. <laughs> thank you thank you for the instapot tutorial <laughs> tutorials <laughs> we both learned a lot don't make that much food at once without proper knowledge right so you know and again um you know you learn things by doing mm -hmm. or, well i learn things by doing and if it goes wrong it goes wrong learn from it but i tend to learn better from my mistakes than i do from someone else teaching so this is a great great thing for me so end of the world we're golden because i know what to do at the end of the world you just pack that thing up with all the food and you're good to go <laughs> all right good night folks take care